Yeah. Karura Forest, which is located north of the capital Nairobi, is one of the largest urban gazetted forests in the world. Years ago, it was about to be grabbed for a development project. But Kenyan Nobel laureate, the late Wangari Mathai, successfully led efforts to stop this through her Green Belt movement. Today, Karura is a symbol against land grabbing and has become a, thrive, a thriving hub of nature. CGTN's Wakista Nyabwa has more. The sun's rays peep through the canopy, marking the start of a new day. Visitors start arriving in Nairobi's Karura Forest from 6 a.m. when the gates open. During the weekend, early mornings are the best time to come to Karura Forest because as the day progresses, more and more visitors continue to pour into the forest. Today, visitors have had a bit of a late start because of an early morning drizzle, but they're here anyway because they say here they find renewal, rejuvenation and a little excitement to spice up their week. They come to take long, brisk walks, to run, uh, where do I get it? or even to cycle. The demand for the space increased during the coronavirus pandemic when families yearned for more open spaces. It, it's just a place where you come and recharge and reset and forget about the busy life in the city. The forest holds a special place in the hearts of Nairobi residents because of its unique history. The Karura Forest Reserve is an urban forest on the outskirts of Nairobi. It was protected in 1932, but has gone through turbulent times. Karura Forest is in the northern part of the city of Nairobi. Professor Karanjan Jaroke is one of the custodians of the forest. He remembers how, in the 1990s, the forest came under pressure from politicians who planned to hive off pieces to pave way for urban development. Nobel laureate, the late Professor Wangari Mathai, was attacked here in 1999 while fighting for the forest. Professor Wangari Mathai awoke and started saying, look, I'm a veterinarian scientist, but there's something wrong when you do away with the forest in the manner that we are doing. And she started the campaign that now we call the Green Belt Movement. Other activists joined in the fight and the forest was saved. Today, it sits on about 2,500 acres. A new forest act brought together the local communities, the Kenya Forest Service and the Friends of Karura to safeguard the forest. The reason why we have won the hearts of the community so that they are not destructive is because we have turned this forest into a pro a sustainable, uh, non-productive forest. Everybody feels taken care of by this forest. So for me, I can come with my wife and my son and so on and grandson and they really enjoy the forest and that's all they want. For a poor woman in Gidogoro will come in, collect firewood, come in, do some work that she is supposed to work at her own CBO and at the end of the month, she has money in her hands. Visitors and friends of the forest also pay a fee that goes towards its maintenance. The park's remaining forest land protects five rivers, a large waterfall, and many indigenous trees. There are archaeological sites and historic caves. And on a good day, one can spot animals like monkeys, as well as several birds. It's nature's paradise, right in the city. Uh, I think when Karura was, in, was first introduced, uh, there were like a million people in Nairobi or less. Uh, now we are five million people. So with urban planning, we need to create more spaces like these uh, all around Nairobi so that it just, it's just not one space we have, but uh, we have spaces in every part of Nairobi for where people can enjoy. It is a testament to the power of collaboration, shared vision and goodwill to safeguard and preserve the environment. Bulkisanyabwa CGTN.